Joe. Joe on Joe is the only podcast where Joe talks about Joe. And now, your host, Joe Slepsky. Hey, Joe on Joe listeners, it's me, Joe Slepsky. And I'm back and you're back. This is the uh, the quarantine re-releases of our original tracks going back four years. And I hope you're enjoying these as much as I'm enjoying reliving them, warts and all. I, I, uh, I, I think you can easily hear where I'm finding myself and finding what the show turned out to be. So I'm really happy to share these with you guys. Again, we pulled these back from behind the Patreon wall and I wanted to make them available to everybody during this time to share and give and listen and have fun, especially because G.I. Joe's back on YouTube now. So, yeah, so I appreciate that. And you guys uh, can always follow me at Joe and Joe Pod on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Let me know what you think some of these early episodes, how terrible they are, or how funny they are, or how awful they are. And we're starting recording back up again, so reach out to me. Let me know, Joe and Joe Pod at gmail.com. Let me know if you want to join me for an episode. I believe we're going to jump into G.I. Joe Extreme very, very soon. So without any further ado, here is the OG track from Joe on Joe four years ago. Enjoy. You are listening to the Joe on Joe podcast. The only podcast where Joe talks about Joe. And now, your host, Joe Slepsky. Hi, and welcome back to Joe on Joe. I'm your host, Joe Slepsky, and with me this week is a special man, a talented man. He's uh, a newcomer to L.A. relatively. Uh, he's an actor. He's, a, a, from what I've recently discovered, a talented writer uh, and a, an all-around uh, good gent to know, Mr. Alex Tortora. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Joe. It is a pleasure and an honor to be on your show. Well, thank you. Uh, we are sitting uh, on the lovely east side of L.A. Yes. In Alex's uh, palatial crib. Yes, my gorgeous studio apartment. And Alex, you're an actor. I am. From the East Coast. That I am. You went to college for acting. That I did. Where'd you go? I went to Ithaca College. And I am originally from, if you can't tell from my hat, Connecticut. So oh, he's got a Hartford a... Whalers hat. The mm-hmm. whale. Uh, I'm from Fairfield, Connecticut. And yeah, I went to Ithaca, studied acting. Graduated 2014 and uh, moved out here. So, been out here for two years. So you are a baby. I am a baby, as I've been told for the past 24 years of and my you life. You will be told for the next, because you look very young too. You, you've, you've said we've said this before. Uh, you've got a very Tom Cruise look. <laughs> okay. You really yeah. do. You really do. <laughs> and uh, and that's that's no hyperbole. You've oh. yeah. Uh, I've gotten it's, that it's, since it's, 17. It's from that jacked up nose. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. And, yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've got the three teeth in front, too. I'm uh, obsessed with Scientology, let yeah, me Yeah, that's you. the thing. And you have so many... You, the thing about you is you have so few thetans <laughs> that it's you've you've got... Wait, you've this got, microphone in my hand isn't part of the personality is, test? No, no, What no, are we doing here? No, we're, we're, here to, we're here to find out if Zemnu, the Titan, uh, is, is going to come down to Earth and visit you. So... You, <laughs> To give you a visual description, Alex, you got you got a little Tom Cruise in you, okay. and you're a baby face, mm-hmm. and we're about to talk about a show, GI Joe, that was uh, made and produced. This this show up this show aired in like early winter, 1985. You weren't even in your father's body nope. in 1985. I was not. No, you were not. Not even in inkling. Uh, so, to get your perspective on the show, I am I cannot wait. Cause I to, so you've never seen an episode of GI Joe, right? I know what GI Joe is. Correct. I have absolutely in the you know annals of nerddom, um, or is it annals? No, it's annals. 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 Annal is like what's going to happen to my marriage with uh, uh, with Rebecca, Joe and Joe's Tony Randall. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, She'll never hear this. Your geek bona fides. Your geek bona fides are strong. I okay. know this. I, I work with you. <laughs> uh, you've. You, you've got a you've got a huge vast knowledge, so I know you're down with GI Joe as a concept. Which I don't think, but I don't think you've ever seen an episode. I have not. It's funny because it's weird you say that because it is 110 percent right before my time. Like, um, I always tell people like this at work because they've talked about like shows that I remember and like stuff like that. And it was like I remember like Full House being on TV, Fresh mm-hmm. Prince of Bel Air, but like you know, 
it's, I guess controversial and it's off the air now, but like the Cosby show was like, I, not at all. I know. Right. But you like know, not at all part of it's what's so great, I was like right what's, before it. What's the irony of the Cosby show is that it, it's like America has been drugged and we all forget about it now. But I it's, have it's, no, it's, I have like <laughs> no like I have a theory on that um, by the connection way. to it. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, well, yeah, like, because, like, the yeah, because no one will ever talk about that show again. So it's like, it's like America was roofied by Bill Cosby as well <laughs> as, as his victims. And I'm under I want to, I got a theory. I believe, you know, he released that terrible movie, Leonard part six. I want to think there was a Leonard part one through five. But we were just all roofied to forget about it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past us. You were born in an era which I've touched on a little bit before. It was a really low time for G.I. Joe. The mid nineties yeah. was very low for G.I. Oh, Joe. 100%. The comic book gets canceled in um I want to say it was ninety five and the show had been off the air for a few years itself. Uh it wasn't in heavy rotation on, on uh like on you know, on repeats and reruns and stuff. The comic book was picked up by uh Dark Horse did a G.I. Joe. Uh, like it was crazy. They did like two G.I. Joe miniseries that weren't in regular continuity. They just used the same names and stuff. And it tied in with a, speci- a, a relaunch of the toy that never went anywhere. Like it was a, a totally unsuccessful relaunch. It's around 97 ish. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a really downtime for G.I. Joe, which would have been your formative years. So now I'm not surprised. Yeah. That's not a thing. So what were you into? <laughs> what were you into when you so were So like when you that's were what up? I'm saying. So like other than G.I. Joe, like Ninja Turtles. Yeah, definitely were there. Power Rangers, hands down, that was the biggest one. What was um, your favorite Ranger? Of course, the green. Like no one's not going to deny that. But beyond that, really, I would. Yeah. Oh, of course, dude. Green's my favorite color. Okay. Ask anyone. Well, that, you are wearing a green like, hat. Okay. There we go. Um, you say. By the way, you just said that as if like that was a common knowledge thing. Like, it, don't you know? Don't Didn't you know? Don't you subscribe to the Alex dude, newsletter, dude? Green is, is my no, favorite it's color. Like I've had discussions on Christmas literally with my parents because I've like gotten angry because it's like nice they give me good things like oh thank you so much, but do I really need seven green sweaters? And like well, people, and from, they're the, like, from the from the from the excitement that you're that you're proclaiming your love for green, I think the answer is yes. I guess the answer is yes. Well, it's a good thing you love green because today's episode is called the Greenhouse, Greenhouse Effect. Effect. And um, that has not been planned, my friend. Not at all. Not at all. Not in the slightest. The greenhouse effect. Now, I'm surprised, going just by the title, that that is the title of the episode of something that was Produced born in, in 19, 1985. Yeah. Well, I think they knew what greenhouse... Well, okay. Well, literally, there is an actual greenhouse in there. But I think greenhouse gases and stuff, I think that was on the cusp. Because the, the, the whole ozone thing, that was big in the 80s. Like, the hole in the ozone layer. But they didn't. Okay. They didn't. Um, and I'm no expert in this. I'm no expert. Which I'm no expert on anything. By the way, I just saw that in an article. Well, so what we currently call global warming, it started in holes in the ozone layer. Mm. So that's where that's where the paranoia started. So today we refer to it as global warming, but back then it was there's these I, holes. I, I believe we call it climate change. Climate change, exactly. <laughs> which, which, get which, educated, Joe. I, yeah, Come which, on. Listen, I'm denying that it exists. And I'm gonna make America great again. Oh, oh um, God! No, no, no! Oh, um, Jesus! Uh, Save us, no. Lord! Well, it started with the ozone layer, so there, there was greenhouse. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if the title of this was pulling, like, not because there is a literal greenhouse in the show, but also pulling from the idea of the greenhouse gases and stuff, because we knew that uh, we knew that yes. the holes in the ozone. We will poison them with the greenhouse gases. Have you ever done any voiceover work? Um, I've thought about it. I think it would be fun. Okay, so the answer to the question is no. No. Okay. <laughs> I, just, I just want truth. Dude, no, I've got other yeah. things i got to focus on. No, I mean, it would be funny to go in there and just yeah. be like, you know. Yes. Well, feel free feel free to, to voice away with whatever you want on this episode. You got it, Joe. What, uh, what's your, so what's your favorite kind of uh, performance to do? Like, what do you, is well, it, do you do a lot of stay? I've, so I've seen you recently. Well, let's get to this. I've seen you recently in a show called uh, Maladaptation. Yes. <laughs> and it was a part of the LA Fringe Festival. Uh, yes, the Hollywood Fringe. Yeah, you were, you were dynamite in it. Oh, thank you. Uh, and real quick, <laughs> before we go any further, you can find out more about my friend Alex at his website, which is www. AlexTortora.com, A L E X T O R T O R A. Dot com. Dot com. Uh, his Instagram, if you want to follow him on there, is at A T O R T 18. Thank you very much, Joe. <laughs> is that because you were 18 when you when you started your Instagram? No. I was actually, I think, 23. What's the significance of 18? 
I was born on December 18th, 1991. Two days. You're one of those people. Two days after the Winter Soldier performed his horrendous deed. Oh, the stars. oh my God, you're right. <laughs> Dude, and I was sitting next to you in the theater. I When they, they put that date up there, I was like, you got to be shitting me. Like oh, I'm literally fantastic. not alive for this event. To have, a, and to it was probably on the East Coast, too. Oh, yeah. I I'm sure be, Tony was living on the East Coast. Hey, he could have been in Greenwich, Connecticut. Nice. Uh, so you were in a show, Maladaptation, ri- written by yourself, yep, dir- I, I believe it. directed by yourself? Um, <laughs> directed story. by someone? Anyone? Yeah, we uh, we tried to self-direct it, and that was a fun... It was There was a lot of good work. You know, We really put our effort in. It got us off book. It got us to a certain place. And then we realized that theater for two people is just a little weird. So we brought in an awesome woman in the last week or so, and she really tweaked it up. Good. And... Um, I guess you saw it. What did you think of the private? Oh, I thought it was great. Yeah, I thought it was great, and and I agree with you. Uh, giving another set of eyes on, on your on your projects is really key. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. For all, it was for all you budding experience. budding uh, budding creatives out there, um, it it really helps. It really helps. So I'm I'm glad that you did that. I didn't know I didn't know you did that. That's great. Oh no. Yeah. 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 I mean, like I I learned so much on this project and just realized that you know sometimes. You just can't do everything on your own. No, you can't. And you just have to have teamwork. Which because... is a great lesson that, from the play. And, and we can't, I can't, I don't actually don't want to talk about it all very much. <laughs> I really don't, I don't want to talk about it very much because I don't want to spoil it. But if anyone's here listening and you're in the LA area, uh, it, you, you've actually, it was Fringe was over last month, but you've got an extended run. Uh, it's going to sometime, oh, we yeah. don't know the dates, but end sometime, sometime at the end of July. Uh, if you tell them Joe and Joe sent you, uh, you won't get any discounts, but I will get recognition, and you'll spread my word. So thank you. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Yeah. Just oh, and time. along those routes, uh, remember to hit me up and tweet me up at uh, at Joe on Joe Pod on Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. Most importantly, uh, if you're out there and you're near a computer and you use iTunes, go on to iTunes and leave me a review. It helps immensely to get uh, readership with iTunes. They they uh, look they look at reviews for one of their algorithms for the popularity of a show and whether or not to feature feature it on uh, different profiles and different pages within iTunes. So if you can get out there and leave me a review and you know listen, tell me I'm terrible. Tell me this is the worst show you've ever heard. But I'm going to tell you this: Joe on Joe is the best show about GI Joe that you're ever going to listen to during the half hour that you're listening to it. And that is a promise. That is a guarantee. <laughs> it's a gift. So without any further ado, Alex Tortora, you child, you. Yes. We're going to get into an episode called The Greenhouse Effect. The greenhouse Effect. Now, as we go, you're going to be you're going to need to be introduced to a lot of characters. You're going to have a lot of questions, so I want you to feel free to ask away anything okay. you need, okay? All right. All right, let's do it. Let's go with it. Yo, All right, so here we go. G.I. Joe, Alex's first G.I. Joe. We're breaking your G.I. men. My cherry is being popped. So, this is the greatest theme song you're ever going to hear, first of all. Uh, they're throwing Destro around like a like a rag now. He has. Look at all the action and the adventure. Look at these ships they're flying in. That shipwreck. That's Wild Weasel. That's Dusty. It's Stalker, Duke, Gung Ho, Scarlet, Airtight, Punt, Cobra Commander, Lady J, Flint. Do you know any of these people? You no, know, and you know what's really making me laugh is this is so different than I thought. I would have probably really liked this show. This was not on when I was a kid. Yeah, no, right. It totally wasn't. Why? What did you think it was gonna be? Just I think a little shittier. <laughs> well, let's we'll start. The episode starts called the Greenhouse Effect, written by Gordon Kent. And it opens on a, a, a generator, some kind of engine of some sort, being test fired, and some some nerdy scientists. But there's three Joes there. Oh, actually, four Joes. I'm sorry. They're and they're there to oversee the test firing. We've got Barbecue, who is the uh, Boston firefighter. That's him. There was Wild Bill, and that was the gentleman in the cowboy hat. He's the pilot of the Dragonfly the helicopter. That's Alpine, and uh, Bazooka is the guy in the football jack, football uniform. There's a, this is Crimson they wear football uniforms. Football uniforms. Yeah. Did, did you not know? Did you not know any of this? Guys working on yeah. secret like you, rocket not, technology. Yeah. Did you know any of this? None. So we cut to the Cobra base and Cobra Commander and Cobra. Destro. They're talking to 
a Crimson Guardsman. This is actually a really cool bit. What is the significance of the colors? Okay, so this guy, he just radioed into Cobra Headquarters and said, this is Crimson Guardsman, blankety, blankety, blank. That is an awesome bit that they did in the comic books where they had Crimson Guardsmen were infiltrated in society as spies, like industrial spies and, and government spies and all this stuff. So this is one of our first glimpses on the show of a guy who's been infiltrated, you know, in, has infiltrated a portion of, you know, society, in this case, this high end, you know, facility as a janitor to help Cobra's aims. You know what I mean? So this is kind of a sweet little subterfuge. And uh, he shows up, he's a janitor. All the I'm scientists, sorry, everyone's Professor, upset. He drops a mop bucket right over, away. and he's going to... Uh, <laughs> the Joes are laughing. Oh, my God. He is wearing a Oh, he's totally wearing a Oh, cool. But he's got cargo really pants. Sorry, right? Oh, yeah. Oh! He throws oh, a bucket. Jesus. It's the old bucket toss. Hold it right there, buddy. Alpine, they all attack him. It turns out the Crimson Garden, he's pretty capable. And he busts in, and he grabs this secret canister. Now, this canister is a uh, some special rocket fuel, and that's what they were testing. And that's why Cobra sent him to this... Uh, Test facility, this like or laboratory, right? Who did the animation? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I think it's um, I don't know. I should know, but I again, I don't do a lot of research on this. I just know it and love it, but I don't know a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Um, but it's the same animation company that did like Gem and the Holograms. Okay. Um, they did. I believe they did the Pride of the X Men. From yeah, the day. that's what it looked kind of. That's what yeah, I'm even thinking. Did, you know what's funny? They did Transformers. Is, okay, because there there's some shows from the '80s that like I was. That's why I'm surprised. I was like, oh, I thought the animation would be a little like shittier. No, I was no, like, no. I, damn, I've, I wish I saw like superheroes in this, like Batman or Superman. Yeah, like back in the day, that would have been a dope ass show. I've than, always than, loved like, the, super, the Super Friendship. I've always loved the way these shows looked. I've always loved it. Um, I think, and actually, I do think this is the same animation house that did the Superman CBS cartoon. Okay. Did you ever see that one? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very short-lived, but they would do... What made it stood out is that they would do... Superman's Adventure would be like, I don't know, 18 minutes of the show, and then the final four or five minutes of the show would be uh, a flashback to his youth, and they would tell like stories from growing yeah. up in Smallville. Super boy. Yeah, super right. And, it, and But it was all ripped from the John Byrne stuff, and it was so oh, great. Yeah it was, yeah, it was It was so good. I'm going to go back and watch those. Yeah, and I, I want to say it's the same animation house, but I, you know, I, it's good. listen, I don't know. If, if you're listening, you're going to point me wrong. I was so wrong about something last week, and, and thankfully uh, a friend on Twitter reached out and corrected me. And, and you, you, learn stuff, you learn stuff every week. So the Joes are still fighting with this Crimson Guardsman who is um, he's pretty pretty poorly and out of shape for the Joes to have this much trouble with him. Uh, but, you know, if, if they didn't have this much trouble, you wouldn't have much of an episode. Right? So he's getting away. They show up. They got Silver Mirages. They got an Striker, And they're going to try to find this guy. I want your thoughts. I want your thoughts on uh, the looks of the characters. Right now, we're just looking at houses. Oh, there's well, the no, greenhouse. So oh, there guy, is yeah, the greenhouse. There is literally the greenhouse, the titular greenhouse. So, no, so you've got uh, Bazooka. He's in his football uniform. Wild Bill's dressed like a cowboy. Like, was what you, Bazooka like, an actual football player? Or um, he's just a fan? I think, it was, I think in the story, he, he played football at some point. I don't, I don't know if they ever really got into it. Believe me, officer, I know the difference between an intruder and... Of course, it's Bazooka. He's probably the quarterback. He probably has a bazooka for an arm. Get it? Oh, I never thought of that. Yeah? No, I don't think he's smart enough to be the quarterback. He's actually pretty dopey on the show. That's, oh. his, that's his personality. Um, real quick, there was a picture of that guy's, like... The Crimson Guardsman goes to a, a, a farmhouse greenhouse, and he breaks in, and the guy who... The farmer who owns it calls the cops on him. Harvey actually had <laughs> yes. Yeah. The gun pointed straight out. Oh, well, listen. No hesitation. I just mean, going guns in. How much has them. changed? So, um... Well, the casualness, apparently. Yeah, in the guy's house. In the guy's house, though, there was a picture. What looked like a woman, like is like his grandma, had a mustache. So, as he's fighting the cops, the canister gets unsealed, and the greenhouse gas starts. Uh, the, this experimental baby, gas starts baby, but floating all through the it. greenhouse. He's obviously after my secret plant food formula. And this dope, this farmer Thank dope, you he's got. Thank uh, officer. I don't even know what I'd have done without you. Yeah. This dude's don't like the guy from uh, True Detective. You ever watch it. the end of that? It is totally that is like exactly True Detective. Who this, uh, this Very much like that. Is. Or or actually, um, now that we're watching this, I'm actually thinking this guy's like, and it matches, it kind of matches. Remember the movie Creep Show? Big and strong. Did you ever see that horror movie? And I think that movie was in 83, so that would be time for this. There was a bit where the, one of the stories was Stephen King actually played the character. 
Yes. And I think it was a Stephen King story. But Stephen King was the farmer and a meteorite fell and all of his, all the plants in the area, like everything turned to plant and he became like a moss man. <laughs> Right. It was like a horror thing. And that's kind of what's happening here. And that guy looks remarkably like Stephen King. So we go to commercial break with the plants growing out of control. Joel will return after these messages. The file card feature this week is on the generic Cobra, the enemy soldier. We're talking about the infantrymen, the guys in the blue suits and the black face masks that don't get a lot of screen time or at least a lot of lines and are constantly jumping out of airplanes with parachutes. Now, the file names, of course, are unknown because there are so many of them. They can't list them all on a file card. But their primary military specialty is the infantry. Their secondary military specialty is sabotage. Or is it sabotage? Birthplace, various countries, and their grade E4 or equivalent. One of the nameless, faceless legions of Cobra Command. Each Cobra is highly skilled in the use of explosives. All NATO and Warsaw pack small arms, sabotage, and the martial arts. Qualified expert on the Scorpion machine pistol, Dragunov sniper's rifle, Uzi submachine gun, and the M16. Cobras swear absolute loyalty to their fanatical leader, Cobra Commander. Their goal? To conquer the world for their own evil purposes. The variation on the Cobra soldier was the Cobra officer. Now, Cobra officers are frontline fighters who lead Cobra attack units into battle. Many are believed to be operating as spies at defense plants, nuclear power facilities, etc. All of them are martial arts experts and masters of disguise, deceit, and demolitions. Cobra officers are dedicated to destroying G.I. Joe and the American way of life. Beware, they are extremely dangerous enemies. They are the most generic cannon fodder you're ever going to find on any show ever. But they always have a parachute to save their bacon when their plane gets shot out of the sky. So to the Cobra soldier and Cobra officer, we salute you. Back to G.I. Joe. So the rocket fuel has caused the plants to grow tremendously, which is very much like what happened in the creep show. I'll take your word movie. for yeah, it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was we talk a lot on the show, we talk a lot about that, that Joe takes a lot of influences from pop culture and kind of runs them through the G.I. Joe cycle. Uh, do you have any idea who these two do? I'd be very happy if I'd lost that fuel canister. Exactly where is the rocket fuel canister now? Yeah, those two dudes. You can talk. One has a scar, one's the unlucky yeah, one. They're the Crimson scar. twins. They're, they're Tomax the and Zaymite. Yeah, they're Tomax they and Zaymite. Yeah. And they are twin, they're identical twins, but one of them, and I always forget which one which, maybe Zaymot has the scar. Uh, they were fantastic action figures because they were absolute mirrors of each other. And uh, Would you get two for the price of one? Yeah, yeah, they came in a two-pack. Absolutely. <laughs> and Well, it wasn't for the price of one, but it was a two-pack. Well, they're definitely... And the gag on the show is if you punch one, the other one feels the pain. That's the most useless. That's double the pain. Right? You would think, but it's, you know... But then on the other hand, they've also used their twindom to, uh, like, um, to sense each other. So, like, there was one episode where... Uh, one of them was taken hostage by the Joes, and he he purposely caused himself a bunch of pain, and through that psychic link, that's, like how, that's how his brother found him. What's that? There was a mole man for a second. Oh, fantastic. So Cobra back in their snake-like temple. Cobra yeah. always has snake temples. Who is this man? That is Destro, and he is the arms supplier the for cobra arms supplier he, he this suppli- man made out of metal with green little laser eyes uh-huh is the oh he Jesus. provides the guns for cobra and all the weaponry he runs mars mars like mars weapon mars uh like armament divisions he's scottish he wears an open shirt high collared <laughs> <laughs> oh i've noticed medallion medallion and uh did you see the jojo movies no. Okay, so you haven't even seen the movies. No, yeah. I, that was no. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Well, so he's the Cobra number two, but he's also not really technically all Cobra. He's he's a he's a mercenary, so he like oh, so he kind of works for hire. Look at those eggplants. Yeah. So those eggplants are enormous. We cut to the county fair, and Farmer Bob is selling his gigantic fruit. He's got a banana plant. And he's mad. Those are massive bananas. I don't think you can grow bananas in like Iowa, wherever the heck they're at, right? They're like bananas burst, all tropical? of them are bursting at the seams. Aren't bananas they're, tropical? Oh, they're totally bursting. They're still growing. Oh, boy. That's pretty phallic. He just got a banana in the chest. Not but, like not like just like a huge. Huge, huge banana. So everything's starting to overripe at first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everything's starting to overripe at first. Oh, my God. This uh, guy got a 
good. Grapes one. are flying everywhere. It's, Everyone at the state fair is getting smashed by giant purple really grapes. Over, it's incredible. <laughs> well, have you ever have you ever seen yes. that? I no. Mean, what if you were at a county oh, fair? God, that's why it's so American. And a giant banana it's just so shot American. out and hit you in the chest. <laughs> that's what I expect what would every you, time I go to the county you, fair. What would you do? So these guys, uh, Alpine and Bazooka, are pulling up on Silver Mirage motorcycles uh, because Wild Bill and, and – okay, this guy is now – he's talking to the dandelions like they're his gods, and they start shooting dandelion seeds like missile fire, which is pretty awesome. It's puncturing tires. Puncturing <laughs> tires. Oh, and he considers the plants his father. This guy is a loony bin. And why? Oh, my God. A, a potato plant has taken hold of the Silver oh Mirage. Oh, my God. They literally shoot missiles. And they shoot a missile. Blank on the guys. Oh, my God. And what do you get? You get a giant hot <laughs> pile of mashed potatoes. Yo, Listen. Is everything all right? Need sour cream. Ah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Because it's a mashed what potato. The... Oh, God, so in dude. comes Destro. Dead. In comes Destro, and he's flying a Fang helicopter. And he's, because uh, he knows, Destro knows what's up with these plants. And he gets that canister back. And Wild Bill. It's fabulous. Hey, partner. It is kind of funny, though. Actually, Wild Bill is not piloting he the dragonfly. He hides behind a giant ear of corn. Ear of corn, which is about to burst. This is super and it's, fo- Oh, my God. Please yeah. tell me it goes into popcorn. It should, right? I don't think it does. I think it just fires. It just fires more missiles. Which is, yeah, which is pretty... Metal. Right. Pretty painful. It's almost... <laughs> yeah. Jumps on the Fang helicopter, which the Fang was such a favorite toy. Everyone, I love this guy. I mean, if he's the head of this weapons design thing, does he is he like the you know cover of the company? Yeah, he's great. So like, does Tesla's he have like great. interviews on like CNN or like um you know MSN he, Money? Probably, yeah, yeah. At some point, yeah. So his um his his history is. Uh, I'd love to see his expo. Well, you know, like the little weapons expo or something. Yeah, or oh yeah, like, totally. So his like his past has up. always been. A, whenever they've told, it's slightly different. But the basic rule is that his. The metal mask that he wears, it's it's a mask that all the men in um in his family have worn masks like that over oh. the centuries. And in the movie they said it was because like his earliest, earliest ancestor was uh Victor like put in prison. Well, no, like put in prison and, and as a punishment was made to wear the mask. Oh, so so he then was the his, man in the iron mask. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's exactly, yeah. Dumas. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Uh so he just straight up commandeered the dragonfly. And threw Wild Bill and Barbecue out of it, and they the only thing they're saved by is this Jack and the Beanstalk. Oh my God, giant just, Beanstalk. They just literally fell to the ground. Yeah. That was a great sound the only thing dead. that The only thing that they're saved dead. them. Oh, no, the Beanstalk saved them, but it's also it's it's Beanstalk shooting giant legumes at yeah, Destro. Lentils? Leg legumes? Legumes? Lentils? Len, lentils? Beans? Legumes? Beans? Legumes or beans. beans, right? Is that how it works? I'm not a botanist. <laughs> I'm not a botanist, but I will play one on TV if you'll have me. Go to www.alextortoro.com oh, and hire me. Please, please. It's Cobra so, Commander. This is a fun bit. This is very much Jack and the Beanstalky, where Destro goes to get the nitro fuel, right? But he comes back with the bean. Remember Jack? was going into town with the money and he comes back with the bean and his mom's yeah. like, Jack, you're a fool. You know, that's what's happening to Destro right now. And Cobra Commander throws this bean out the window, oh, no. which by the way, that's a hell of a toss. And the bean, maybe he was the quarterback. Yeah. But okay. So here's something. Here's something. So, Co- so Cobra Commander basically says, uh, well, first we're going to go to commercial and then we're going to get into this. Joel will I got a theory of another messages. episode. Now, back to G.I. So, Joe. Cobra Commander tossed the bean out the window, but in one of the miniseries, Destro had a whole creeper vine, which was a weapon that they used. And it was essentially this bean, it was essentially the same concept where this overgrown uh, plant. Oh, he's chained, dude. Yeah, the this bondage. overgrown plant was a weapon that Destro used. So, I want to know why does all of a sudden Cobra Commander think that Destro is a fool when that was a weapon they used in another episode? I, You know, like, I. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but, you know, to each his own uh, when it comes to the story. So the uh, the plant has broken into the uh, 
broken into the uh, uh, the castle and it's freed Destro because Cobra Commander in a fit of peak had Destro locked up. Would you have your enemy locked up if you if if if, if a guy came in rambling about beans? As and a stuff? matter as knowing me as an actor and as dramatic as I fucking can be, yes, <laughs> yes. You don't think there would be a monologue, some fiery ceremony, absolutely. Freaking lootly. <laughs> There's no question about that. But like, if we're being in all seriousness, no, you shoot him in the head, you're done. It's over. When when they J- were, Jimmy Olsen style, Batman versus Superman, just get him out. When they were walking out of the out of, out of the, when they were walking out of the castle, they just stepped literally stepped on the bodies of some Crimson Guardsmen on the way out. Oh, just soulless. Yeah, heartless. So the whole city is now being overrun by plants. Chicago be handed over. Chicago. Chicago. So Chicago. they are in Chicago. So I'll bet you. Home of the Blue Jean yeah. Committee. Oh, my goodness. We come from a long, rich sausage tradition. Uh, so sh- I didn't realize my home. It's my hometown getting tore up by this. And by the way, there are no mountains in Chicago. There were just huge mountains where these guys were flying. They sing while they shoot cannons. Yeah. And of it, massive vegetables. Yeah. So. Flooding the streets of Chicago. Tomax and Zaymont are shooting seeds all over Chicago. They apparently have an extensive enterprises uh, building in Chicago. There's a massive... Or- Why would they shoot that down? Oh, wait. It was Despero. I love that this is Chicago. Oh, my I God. I love that. So these giant oranges are rolling down Michigan Avenue. Well, I guess that's one way to get your minimum daily requirement of vitamin C. That's Shipwreck. He's one of the favorites on the show. He's, and Polly, his bird, is amazing. Dude, he looks like the go-go God, boy at the Abbey. Slack, he, well, he, yeah, I mean, is he, looks, he looks job? like a village person. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Dude, um, with the parrot? Dude, you, yeah. I would pay to see that. Oh, my God. It's amazing. So sure Al- Alpine app. is scaling the side of the extensive enterprises where he's going to come across uh, Tomax and Zaymot and uh, stop them from shooting these seeds all over the windy city. He just he just flooded the Gold Coast with, oh, with legumes. Packs. Yeah, the cobra, the cobra. Dude, what cobra's dope? Cobra's, cobra has like cobra's the dopest shit. How do they not win? Right, because sheer determination and patriotism. Yeah, but when you have jetpacks that look like mini F yeah. fifteens, right? Are you kidding me? Like at that point, uh, totally. And Joe, why, get on it. And and why would what why, why would it help? I just. Climb off the building. Oh my god, he's just oh, commandeered. He just, he just commandeered. Jet yeah, just commandeered the jetpack. With lasers? What the f- Oh, they got lasers? Oh yeah, they got lasers. Dude, they I would have been shoot, all they, about this shit. They don't shoot bullets on G.I. Joe. It's all lasers. Dude, and look at his fabulous like oh the like metal collars. Yeah. And the shoulder pads. They're just great. Oh, they're great. He's plummeting to his death, yeah. but damn, he will look good. Oh yeah. The Crimson Twins. They're the best. The Crimson Twins. And now oh. they just they just okay, so they're falling and they drop some seeds. Which grow at a lettuce. remarkably fast rate, and he lands <laughs> they in lettuce. Still just bounced around. They land in a head of lettuce. And those lettuce they fell not only faster than those than, than the humans did, but they had time to sprout and grow lettuce. These are the most amazing weapons ever. And Chicago is caught in the crossfire. Did you say, say something about Chicago? It's caught there, dude. Listen, uh, <laughs> they, listen. I tell you what. The next time Cobra tries to uh, pick, <laughs> stick its head around the old windy city. I got a little what for for him, all right? He should come down down to Comiskey Park. We'll show him what's happening, all right? You don't see Cobra hanging out up by uh, over by Comiskey, over by there, back of the yards. I'll tell you what, right now. That's right, Joel. Hey, Go Bears. Bears. That's the thing. <laughs> That's the thing. Bazooka should should have joined the Bears, my friend. Wait, no, so actually, is there what? an actual – I don't think we've covered this. Hold on. Dude, they can solve world world. Like the world has changed after this. Who's it that is. Like, that's airtight. He's their. Um, airtight. He's their. He's their emic- yeah, right. He's their chemical weapons specialist. A chemical weapons specialist. Yeah. Um, it, it would be world hunger. Except Where was for the- he during the Iraq? Yeah. Right. He should have been out. Yeah. Uh, um. The problem with the world hunger thing is like, if if everything goes out of control, it would just kill everybody. So they have to figure out how to make it work, and maybe they can't. Well, yeah, but like even with the remnants. How long could they, like, you know... Well, the, I imagine that food... You know, like, be- where's the chief scientist on this being like, ah, dang, you know, Cobra kind of beat us to it. They've yeah. got massive growing plants and awesome, like, freaking Oh, awesome no, the plants. L train. That's the L train. So the Joes are seeding the clouds uh, over Chicago. The Joes seeded it with, uh, basically, uh, fertilizer, uh, plant poison. And, and knowing that... Wait, now, knowing that this is Chicago, that baseball stadium, that's either Comiskey or Wrigley Field. And, wait a minute, there's lights on it? 
And it wouldn't be. It was. It, that's old Comiskey. Because old commi- what old Comiskey is where the White Sox played. Oh, Wrigley Field did not have lights. Uh, really? prior to it, yeah, Wrigley Field got lights in the late eighties when they made this show. Wrigley Field did not have lights, so the fact that there were lights at that that ballpark means it has to be uh, Comiskey Park. It was right then and there that Even though Joe the skyline would look like it's more it's more Wrigley, advice. that had to be Comiskey Park where the where the White Sox used to play. A little bit of knowledge well, dropped. Easy, let me tell you. So we're we're gonna wind it up. We're back at the state fair. I'm imagining it's actually not Springfield State Fair. It's probably the Iowa State Fair, because I think the Iowa State Fair is actually closer to Chicago than Springfield. Uh, and this farmer's telling his story about the giant corn and airtight. There is a man scared him a in a corn, <laughs> corn outfit. He looks like. With the car yeah. laughing. With well, you the know children. what he looks like? He looks like in the movie oh. in, in the movie Pootie Tang. In the movie Pootie Tang, he looks like Chris Rock when he was the stalk of corn. Oh, jeez. So, Alex, that's your first G.I. Joe episode. What do you think, buddy? What was solved? <laughs> well, they saved the world from they saved the world from the giant the giant plants. The giant We're gonna kill plants, everybody. I guess. Uh, oh, that guy looks cool. Um you know, not as bad as I thought. I would actually be really into this. I have to say, they did keep the pacing and, like, kind of cool. I love the animation. Um, I actually kind of really like it a little more than, like, Thundercats. You know what? That's as, that's as good a recommendation as, as we're going to get. And I never thought I would. I'm, like, kind of, like, mad at myself. I was like, oh. Yeah, this is good. That's as as high a recommendation as we're ever going to get. So with that, I'm going to say thank you, Alex Satora. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate you being on Joe and Joe this week. Dude. And now now you Joe, and Joeing is half the battle. 